This is the 3D Printer Duct Showdown, and what you're about to see may be shocking to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. In this series, we're taking it to the extreme to see which ducts can rise to the challenges and which ones fail miserably. We'll test several unique ducts to see if we can begin to understand what makes a good high-speed printer duct. So I hope you're as curious as I am to find out how each of these different duct designs perform. So stick around. I originally wanted to use my bamboo matte PLA, but this printer at these high speeds needs the high flow filament to reach the flow rate that I want to run for these tests, which is 60 millimeters cubed per second at the max. So I purchased gray Creality high flow filament. It has just been opened and then I have dried it before beginning this as well. I also have run through each of the filament calibration tests and I'll be printing with the door open. I would like to have the door closed, but it's just far too dark inside to see anything that's going on. I have my filament dryer turned on and also feeding the printer. It also has desiccant inside so that it remains as dry as possible, even when the dryer is off at nighttime. My workshop is also temperature controlled, but the humidity will vary a little bit from day to day. I've created these tests to print very fast with extremely fast accelerations. It's gonna be really hard for any duct to perform well. The CPAP style fan is also so loud at 100% that I will instead keep all the tests at just 90%. That's to save my ears. The main goal is to see if there is an optimum design, a design that is superior to the others when it comes to high-speed printing. We may also see some benefits in different areas from each type of design, and I hope in the end we can take concepts from the best performers to work on other common 3D printers, and maybe even some ideas on printers to come as well. We are testing for overall performance for overhangs, bridges, and then general prints also. This is no easy task. We need to cool the filament for these tough overhangs while it's being extruded, but we also need to cool the entire part to prepare it for the next layer. Doing just one of these is gonna be hard enough as it is, and we're trying to do both. We need something to compare against, and it will be the stock duct. I've run each of the four speed tests with the stock duct in place first. For our tests, we have the cliffhanger, previously known as the overhung. That's five, 10, and 15 degree overhangs from each of these four sides. This will be a challenge because we are printing at 0.2 millimeters layer height and for the five and 10 degree angles, there's little to nothing for the next layer to bond to. I think if we're gonna try and learn anything, we need to test to the extreme. So I've made the test a little bit more difficult by shrinking it slightly. That will reduce the layer time. We have the bridge burst and I've modified it slightly to make the bridges a little bit shorter. Honestly, I got a bit carried away when I originally designed this. These bridges will be pretty tough even over the shorter distances and these are fast bridges too. There is very little time to cool and if the flow is overpowering from one side to the other, we should be able to see that as well. We have the spiral shuriken which is hollow and fast and this will be a tough print to cool quick enough. I've sized it to 150% of the original which should help to increase the layer time a little bit but it's still going to be very difficult. And I was planning on printing a pattern benchy four times, but it makes sense to run the standard benchy at the standard size so that we have something familiar that we can compare against. As we get into this further, we can also run some more tests that might do an even better job of revealing which ones are truly the top performers and hopefully allow us to understand why that would be the case as well. When I finish testing all the models, I'll be posting high quality photos under the same lighting for each print so that we can see and compare each one of them more easily. I may also need to call on you to help if the competition becomes too tough for me to judge alone. First up is this incredible little model created by second layer printing called the UFO. This one printed quite well thanks in part to the internal structure to help guide the air. It is compact and relatively heavy at 14 grams for its size which is irrelevant thanks to the built-in anti-gravity system and dark matter propulsion. This duct is quite restrictive when blowing into it. It wraps around the nozzle very close as well. And when I first saw this, I was actually a bit concerned that there would be no place for the air to go, especially on those first few layers, which are really tight to the build plate. But luckily the duct is set up with several millimeters of clearance to the tip of the nozzle. That said, there is no clearance to the silicone sock and that's partially because the heater is actually slightly offset to one side and I didn't even notice until I tried to mount this duct. 
So we'll have to see if this one melts at all with being that close. The UFO did really well on the cliffhanger test. It was able to cool the filament quickly to set the shape so that it didn't sag too much. This duct is extremely loud and annoying. I had to wear my hearing protection while I was printing with it. And although it did well on the overhangs, the overall part cooling suffered quite a bit for the Benchy and the Shuriken. It was not able to cool the parts quick enough. For the Benchy especially, it produced something more similar to a blob than to a boat. This design also had some trouble on the bridge burst because the air was directed straight down, which then forced the initial bridge layers down as well. It did perform better than the stock duct only on the cliffhanger. Even after all those tests, this little green guy kept on hanging in there with just two pins in the two holes. There is just a little bit of melting right in this area where it was touching the silicone sock. And unfortunately, I just broke his arm off. Ugh. The second is Hero Me Delta, designed by Media Man 3D. This one printed nicely and has very little restriction. When blowing into it, there's almost no noticeable resistance. You have very good visibility from the front, which is nice, especially during testing and recording. It's compact and comes in at 14 grams as well, with a very refined semi kind of geometric shape. This one has a dual opposing port design, but the ports are set back from the nozzle and the air is meant to move forward and down as well. It also has an integrated diverter just below the fan supply inlet. As the streams from each side meet, the air then is directed forward towards the front of the printer, which should result in pretty effective overall cooling. The Hero Me Delta performs slightly better on the Benchy than the stock duct. It also had a more uniform result than the stock duct on the Shuriken as well. There were some problems on the bridge burst on the long bridges towards the rear and one of the bridges ended up with a slight twist and the extrusion. This duct did not do as well as the stock duct on the cliffhanger, and that may be in part because this duct doesn't have very much restriction and the air coming out does not seem to be at very high speeds. The area of the single fan supply is 113 millimeters squared, whereas the area of the two mouths coming out is a combined 136 millimeters squared. This duct seems as though it might benefit from a more powerful fan and a larger diameter supply hose. Next up, we have the Diamond Bowl designed by Germ. This model is again quite compact with the flowing curve shapes. It's elegant and it's refined and it comes in at only seven grams. When blowing into it, I didn't notice much of any resistance at all. It has two diamond shaped ports. The design directs the air just below the nozzle and mainly from the rear, but also kind of wraps around slightly from the side. It has an integral diverter thanks to the shape of the ducts themselves. This model printed beautifully with no supports. This one, like the last one, has large mouths, but this time they're nearly the same area as the supply size. The Diamond Bowl did the best of any of these tests on the Benchy. It performed better than the stock duct by quite a bit. The Spiral Shuriken was also better than the Stock Duct and similar to the Hero Me Delta. And the Bridge Burst was okay, but not quite as good as the Stock Duct. And the cliffhanger became a problem on those five degree overhangs where it did not perform well on each of the sides and they were all looking quite a bit different from each other. Only the overhangs towards the front turned out really well. Because these tests are so tough, utilizing as much of the air that the fan can supply without too much resistance is important for overall part cooling, but also some more precise placement of that fast moving air below the nozzle is gonna be important for that cliffhanger test. 
On the other hand, those high-speed airstreams that meet each other in the center cause the air to be redirected down, which causes problems on bridges. I don't know if these are the best of the best, or maybe they're nowhere close to the top. We have 17 ducks left to test. In each of the next videos, we will be testing five or more ducks at a time. So make sure to subscribe and notify as well so you don't miss an episode. We are at nearly 84,000 subscribers, just about 16,000 away from that 100,000 goal by 2025. It is still possible, but I think I'm going to need your help to get there. And if you want to help support the channel in a different way, I have a very short list in the description of products that I use in my shop on a regular basis that I know perform well. Thank you to each of my patrons for making these videos possible and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.